Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Shipborne weapons are a critical part of any modern warship. Modern warships can engage many types of targets with their weapon systems. What does it look like to load and fire these weapons at sea? With the backdrop of the oceans of the world, we uncover this question for you. One would not immediately see the U.S. Coast Guard, USCG, as a surface warfare force, but they are older than the U.S. Navy. On August 4th, 1790, the Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, lobbied Congress for the establishment of a force of 10 cutters. His lobbying was successful, and the USCG came into being. These revenue cutters were the first official warships of the United States. They remained so until 1798, when the US Navy came into being eight years later. Modern Coast Guard cutters, USCGC, resemble destroyers with distinctive shapes and weapon systems. These vessels are used mainly for maritime law enforcement, but their duties include search and rescue, SAR, and defense readiness. In times of war, the USCG becomes part of the U.S. Navy to defend the United States. U.S. Coast Guard cutters like the USCG Bertolf must be able to respond to times of war, but they also must be able to protect themselves. Gone are the days when warships were bristling with batteries of massive guns. These days, the main gun consists of a single turret on the bow. In the case of Legend class cutters, that weapon is the Mark 110 57mm gun, a variant of the Bofors 57mm gun. Not only does the Mark 10 have an impressive firing rate of 200 to 220 rounds per minute, but it can choose between various types of ammunition, such as high explosive armor piercing and even modern guided rounds. Furthermore, the M110 can engage targets at ranges of up to 9,300 yards from the vessel. Compared to the latest warship, the USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier, Coast Guard cutters stand no chance. This aircraft carrier is the first in the Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carrier designed and built by the United States Navy. But for these vessels, it is not only about their aircraft. They also have shipborne weapons to keep adversaries at bay that happen to slip past the aircraft and the destroyers protecting it. For that reason, the Gerald R. Ford class is armed with various self-defense weapons. Among the weapon systems the Ford must rely on to shoot down enemy aircraft that gets past its fighters is the Sea Sparrow missile. This missile is based on the AIM-7 Sparrow missiles carried by the U.S. Air Force aircraft, like the F-15 Eagle. Sea Sparrows are launched from two Sea Sparrow launchers. Each of these launchers can hold up to eight missiles, 
and must be reloaded by ordnance specialists. Grim-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missiles, ESSM, must be manually loaded on deck. That is quite the exercise. When you consider one of these missiles weighs 620 pounds. It's all worth it when you realize it has a range of more than 27 nautical miles. Vessels such as the USS Gerald R. Ford also have missiles that can engage aircraft much closer to them. Carrier strike groups rely on a system of layered defense against enemy aircraft and missiles. One of these is the simple RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile, or RAM. RAM is not the final layer of defense, but these infrared homing missiles are able to engage targets at a range of up to 6.2 miles. Sailors load these missiles into their launchers using a manual system. Each launcher holds a battery of missiles. To counter enemy missile countermeasure flares, the whole battery may be fired at a single enemy aircraft that got through the defenses to this stage. Seconds before the missile is fired, a protective cover is ejected, which protects the weapon from the elements. Once a target has been identified from the Combat Information Center, CIC, deep inside the carrier, the decision to launch is taken. From there, the missile launch is authorized and speeds towards its target at Mach 2. RAM has a warhead weight of 24 pounds and destroys its target by means of a high explosive blast fragmentation explosion. This type of warhead is powerful enough to shoot down any enemy fighter. To ensure the missile is not confused by flares, it has a backup passive radio frequency homing capability. The absolute last layer of defense for fast-moving aircraft, missiles, and surface vessels is the Phalanx CIWS, SeaWiz. Because it is expected to engage targets at the last moment, it accomplishes the job using a high fire rate. Because of its high rate of fire, ordnance specialists are constantly reloading the phalanx. Sailors physically use a cranking mechanism to feed ammunition into the drum magazine of the phalanx. Typically, the weapon is loaded with armor-piercing discarding sabot, APDS, and high explosive incendiary, HEI 20 millimeter rounds, which are usually mixed. Among sailors, the phalanx is also called R2-D2, with reference to the Star Wars droid character because of its appearance. The system is basically a U.S. Air Force M61 20mm Gatling gun used in fighters like the F-16 and F-15 mounted on a ship.
Phalanx was given its radar and forward-looking infrared FLIR camera so that it can detect and destroy targets autonomously. That's right, even if the ship's CIC has been neutralized, the Phalanx will engage targets independently. With a firing rate of 4,500 rounds per minute, or 75 rounds per second. Even if a warship is badly damaged, the Phalanx will keep defending it automatically. If you think the Phalanx is impressive, wait until you hear about the U.S. Navy's railgun. Railguns are a concept where no explosive charge is used to propel a projectile. Instead, the round is launched using massive electromagnets. They operate by delivering a high electric current along parallel rails, producing an electromagnetic force capable of accelerating a projectile up to Mach 6. The prototype railgun can launch 40-pound projectiles at ranges of over 100 nautical miles, or 115 miles. Once the projectile is loaded, the operator of the weapon completes an electromagnetic circuit which launches the projectile out of the weapon. During the firing process, the projectile creates enormous amounts of friction, and the smoke one sees is a thin layer of the barrel burning away. Firing this weapon takes 25 megawatts of power. At locations in Virginia and Texas, the United States Navy has conducted tests on numerous industry railgun prototypes developed by BAE Systems and General Atomics. One potential advantage is the ability to counter air threats, missiles, armored warships, or shore batteries. Other potential benefits include inexpensive munitions and a deep magazine capacity. Each time the weapon is fired, it is with the purpose of measuring a certain element of the whole firing process. Each fire mission is therefore planned in detail, and the necessary measuring devices are put in place. Each fired round brings the U.S. Navy one step closer to a weapon that could outshoot any warship at sea and even land targets. Naval gunnery has remained the primary method by which warships have engaged each other for centuries. Only in the last half century have missiles started to enter the arena. From surface-to-air missiles, like the evolved Sea Sparrow missile, to the RAM, they are intended to engage aerial targets at different ranges. A ship's last line of defense is the Phalanx CIWS, which acts almost like a goalkeeper and keeps the fastest flying missiles and aircraft at bay. As the U.S. Navy starts testing railguns, who knows what the future holds for naval warfare? One thing is certain, naval warfare is evolving to be more lethal. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.
See you next time.